our coverage of Comic Con 2017. I'm Julia Cunningham. Honored to have Ricky Whittle you're sitting very, with me. I was gonna me. say you're very professional. Like, you know, we're news. Like we're doing news. We're gonna throw it to weather in a minute, me and Ricky. Um, yes. But this is—he's also known as Shadow Moon. Shadow Moon here. On yes. This but, incredible series. We just had our first season air on Star. We did. We did. Um, uh, we are good friends. We consider Orlando Jones friend of our show. Orlando Jones is friends of everyone. Everyone is he not he, the most? Like I grew up watching him. So number yeah. one, it's exciting that he even knows my name. Yes. Okay. And then we're working on the same show together. And then the fact that he literally knows everyone in the world. He not knows everyone. Not just the industry. Not just like acting. Everyone in the world. Everyone has and an opinion on. My boy Orlando. He's well, because he's awesome. But yes. also, because so, you brought it up, I mean, this cast just in general is incredible. It's the best ensemble cast I've ever seen on TV. Right. And and I want to say, I mean, you get to work hand in hand with Ian McShane, who is unreal. First of all, just as an actor and a human being. But also, I can't imagine you even get like words in on the side. Like, I imagine <laughs> him to be quite a talker and really taking over sort he, of an, and leading this cast in probably many ways. Um, no, no, no to be, you'll, be, you'll be surprised. He's actually, he's, he's a jokester. He's, we're both from the same area. We're both pranksters yep. uh, from Manchester. So we just talk football. And by football, I mean mm. real football, you know, English right. football where you, you have a ball and you use your feet. Actual foot, not, not the hand egg thing that you guys play. Where, I just where kicked you, Ricky. She just kicked me in the it. knee. It hurt me because I, yeah. I insulted Red football. Card. See, see, so I will not insult America anymore. Football <laughs> is a great sport. Um, yeah, so we, we have a great time. And fortunately, you know, that, that, that kind of chemistry between Shadow and, and Mr. Wednesday is, is important to the central storyline. So Absolutely. the fact that we get on so well off camera, it just bodes really well for, for on screen. So we have, a, we have a great time. And, you know, what better education to have as an actor than one of the best actors of our generation, in, yeah. in McShane. Well, and working with such incredible writing with the character Shadow Moon, who we see go through so many different emotions in this first season, yeah. from having to get out of prison, thinking that he's going to start his life anew, to realizing that he is now heartbroken, he is out of a job, he has this man coming to him saying that there are this great battle that he needs to come. You know, we see him go through so many different, that must be great and rewarding for you just as an actor to sort of play and tap into sort of these different sort of aspects of a character that we're still kind of just getting to know. Yeah, and that's the exciting thing for me is, is I took a big risk by working backwards with Shadow. Um, I know where I want Shadow to be and what he's gonna hopefully become. So uh, to work backwards and to, to, when you first meet Shadow, he's literally, he didn't know his father. Right. He lost his mother. His mother died when he was young. The only thing he had in this world was his wife, Laura. And then she's taken away from him. She dies. And then you find out that she was having an affair with, her, with his with best Dane friend. Dane Cook. With Dane Cook. Dane, I mean, we're supposed to be boys. Dane. Rude. <sighs> Last time I watched your stand-up, <laughs> he was hilarious, by the way. Um, and then you find out that he's died as well. So he's literally lost everything in his life. Right. So it, it left him so vulnerable to Mr. Wednesday's manipulation. I had to kind of make this kind of empty vessel. Whereas now I get to kind of fill that vessel up right. with personality, with emotion, because we didn't even cry at his wife's wedding, uh, his wife's uh, funeral. Sorry. Yeah. So coin toss. You know, it's 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 great. And as an actor, I kind of get to build this character up. So season two, uh, season one, he went from cynic to believer. Now he believes. Now I get to kind of grow his confidence. I get to kind of grow that and earn that personality that I know that. I, where I want Shadow to be. Interesting, you know, I wanted to ask you about that that next phase that we see with Shadow Moon because it's him sort of meeting um, Kristen Chenoweth's character at like this sort of Easter celebration, right? That's sort of a turning point for him. And I wondered, is it one of those notions of someone sort of like becoming a born again Christian or something? Like, are you going to, are we gonna see your character full throttle into the belief with Mr. Wednesday when we pick up in the new season. That's the exciting part, is when we, le when we left him in, at the end of season one, he's finally kind of starting to believe everything that's around him. He also looks up and there's his wife back from the dead. It wasn't a, a, a mirage, a, a dream, a, an illusion. She was actually there. He had that conversation. And that's kind of like cemented everything that's going on around him, that this is all real. So now he's kind of got the love of his life back. I mean, yeah, they've got right. problems, but that was the one thing that kind of put him in this kind of lull. Um, so that's going to be an interesting dynamic and seeing where they go. Can they kind of mend things and, and figure things out? But then you also realize that Mr. Wednesday might have been involved in her death. So now you've got this great dynamic, this great triangle of, of what's, what's going to kind of happen between those three. Is she going to 
Speak to Wednesday, is she going to tell Shadow everything? Right. Um, and then where does uh, Mad Sweeney fit in all this? As I know. Well? You know, as much as I, you know, in the beginning thought, ugh, oh, that Laura Moon, how dare she? I want. Oh, that Laura Moon, how Lauren, dare how, she? Back to weather. Yeah. No, she, um, I was really hoping that at some point we get some spinoff of just her and Mad Sweeney on this, like, caper of comedies, which we sort of get. Yeah. I love how the interactions of these characters change dramatically. I also love how sex is portrayed in this show. Mm -hmm. How we have Bilquis who literally absorbs men and women into her body through yeah. her vagina. We see um, like gay sex portrayed in a very beautiful, loving way. Mm -hmm. We saw like a hearty relationship between you and Laura in flashbacks. Mm -hmm. You know, can you tease anything that's gonna be coming in season two? Sex-wise? Sex I, mean, I mean, if we're talking about sex, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of sex. This is stars. Uh, it is stars. It's a lot, but it, so it's, stars it's, at the end of the day. But, I mean, it's interesting, great, so. right, though, the way it's portrayed. It's not something like we've seen well, on it's TV. Powerful. Well, you look at um, you know, Bill Quist, played by the, the, the powerful Yatide Badaki. It, it's, She's amazing. She takes, you know, it's, it's a power. It's, it's not gratuitous. It's not, like, seedy. It's, it's a really powerful performance. It's, it's incredible. Um, and the same with, with Musa and Omid, who play Salim in the gym. That was a, a beautiful love story. You know, and um, it's sad that it was groundbreaking TV. It shouldn't be because at the end of the day, right. this is the America, this is the world we live in right now. I mean, that is punishable by death in some countries, That's which is, still blows my mind. There we just saw a beautiful story told by beautiful actors. You know, it was it was fantastic. And we're going to see a lot more um, of that in the, in the future. There's definitely iconic moments in the book that I'm looking forward to where um, I think Shadow may have some loving from a certain um, mm. Bast uh, oh. character, uh, which which I think fans of the book will will look forward to. That's oh, I like that tease. I, I was gonna I was gonna go somewhere, but it, it might sound dirty on camera, but it's it involves a cat, um, and 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 Shadow Moon. But I don't want it. it, it now, now it just sounds weird. No, I no, it's, that's not what they're I mean. Everyone behind the cameras are just disgusting. Everyone's everyone's like looking like, at me Ugh. like with stank face Gross. right now. No, it's not what I mean, but. It is what I mean. Um, if you've read the book, you'll know what, what's where, going where on, that's where going. we're talking about. But it's it's all about you know the the funeral parlor with uh, Ibis and, and Jack or with uh, Demore Barnes and Chris Obi. There's a, a third character in that funeral parlor called Bast, and, and that uh, gets that gets involved. That gets involved with right. Shadow Moon. You know what I also love about American Gods, which will be returning next year on Stars. Um, is that, you know, Brian Fuller, who has such a beautiful image for this, the writing is so strong in this. What I actually really loved is that sort of the intention of the entire series was sort of laid out in the first season. And you who have had a history of television, how did you ever get that where you don't have to really cram everything in? Like we really got to know each character. It was always just sort of this driving point where I feel like now it's like, oh, this is what the story is and it's going to be now sort of explosive in the second season. Mm -hmm. Is that sort of how they sort of pitched it to you with the first season saying, you know, <laughs> we're gonna sort of collect characters, we're gonna let people really get to know them and we're full throttling it going forward with the story. Yeah, I feel that this is this, I mean, Brian Fuller put it in the shortest terms possible by saying it's Avengers with gods. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, with him along with Michael Green, who's an incredible writer and, and showrunner as well. I mean, he's responsible for Blade, the new Blade Runner coming yeah. out and, and my favorite film last year, Logan. You know, he's incredible. And but them two minds together sat down and said, look, we're building a world here. Um, we could have spin-offs. You know, we, we can go and follow uh, Sweeney and, and Laura. We can go and follow uh, Mr. Nancy. You know, there's a spin-off book, the Nancy, the Nancy right. Boys. So, you know, there's we're going to really invest in all these characters and play the long game. Unfortunately, I think TV nowadays is very impatient. Mm -hmm. Everyone kind of wants to know everything right away, kind of what's going on. And with our show, you have to think, and, and they don't realize that some of the confusion at the beginning of the, uh, the, the season, the first couple of episodes, is by design. You're supposed to be confused because Shadow is confused. And once he starts to put the pieces together of the puzzle, we allow the audience to kind of figure things out. Um, so as long as you understand that formula and that we're not going to spoon feed you, we think, we think that our audience is, is intelligent enough to, to be patient, to wait it out, and, and to kind of figure things out. That's the excitement. You know, when you used right. to watch a, you know, a, a detective movie, you know, when I sit with sit my mom and my mom would sit there and she'd try and figure it out, and she'd figure it out before me normally. But that was the exciting thing. You kind of, you, you're patient. You're waiting for the story to develop. That's what we're doing with American Gods. We, we, we know the story. We know the storyline. There's a book out. So if you want right. spoilers, you, you can go and see it all. You can do it if you want. But with Brian and Michael, they've changed up the storyline. They've changed up the timeline. So even the season finale for season one isn't in the book. So no one knows what's going to happen at the beginning of season right. two. We're going to go to House on the Rock, which is an iconic part of the book. But 
How do not we get there? Not necessarily the same. Yeah, you want to make it a little different. You want to make yeah. it your own. How do we get there? We've got new gods coming in as well, right? Like we did last year. We had Vulcan, right. played by the, the wonderful Corbin Burson. So, you know, there's 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 legs to go in any direction, um, and it really has got legs, uh, you know, to go for a while as well. And then with Neil Gaiman writing the sequel, we've already started planting Easter eggs in this story right now for his second book. Um, and the best thing about Neil's writing and, and Brian and Michael's storytelling is is and you won't know it till the end. It, it, we've already told you a lot of the story right. that you yeah. need to know, but you won't you it's won't like understand setting, that setting the until you get to this. the end. Yeah. So when you read Neil Gaiman's book, he tells you everything right at the beginning, and you don't realize that till you get to the end, and you go, "Oh my! It was right there at the beginning. What am I thinking?" Trickery. So it's it's just genius writing, and you know, to be led by those three uh, brains is is an honor. Yeah, Ricky, yeah. have you seen scripts yet, or is you, have you guys even gotten that way yet? No, I've not. Early. I've not seen okay. scripts yet. They're, they're, we're in the writing room right it's now, and, room. Okay. and Brian and Michael are going through it with Neil. They're talking storylines and, and characters and things like that. I kind of know a few things, um, but uh, we have a little it bit could of time, all change. Yeah. It could all change. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're still in early days yet. We're not. We're not on. We're not walking on set okay. anytime soon. We don't um, have to worry, so. you guys. So yeah, just just relax. Right. We're just going to allow yeah. the world to catch up, to binge yeah. watch, because a lot of people have actually told me how it's a different experience when you right. actually binge watch. Instead of waiting week oh, for week, yeah. and just you go back to that Stars app or whatever, and and you watch all eight at once. Yeah, it's got a flow and a rhythm. And so those people who are impatient and are confused at the beginning and were like, no, I'm out. I'm too confused. You can you can watch through the eight and episodes and it's a lot through. quicker. Yeah. Well, Ricky, thank you so much for thank you so much for us, me. guys. If you have been it. watching American Gods, you can watch the first season on Stars. You can catch up on the Stars app. Get after it. Do it. This is our coverage of Comic Con here, 2017. We're in San Diego. Ricky, well, I'm Ricky back Wintel. to you. Back to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.